When it comes to air dominance, F-15 is the name everyone is aware of. Designed for air superiority, the F-15 Eagle is among the most successful modern fighters, with over 100 victories and no losses in aerial combat, but did you know that F-15 has done what no other fighter jet on Earth is able to do? Conquered the outer space. In August of 1945, U.S. dropped nuclear bombs on Japanese cities. This event forced Japan to surrender, and the Second World War ended, but a new war was waiting to begin. From 1946 to 1991, the U.S. and Soviet Union locked in a long tense conflict known as the Cold War. Along with arms race, space exploration also served as a dramatic arena for Cold War competition. On October 4, 1957, Soviet Union launched world's first satellite, the Sputnik 1. Fearful of Soviet military control of space, America quickly responded with Explorer 1, beginning the space race phase of Cold War. US vs USSR, both were trying real hard to conquer an ultimate high ground, space. By the year 1985, the Soviet Union had developed a robust capability of putting up very small satellites that could keep tabs on the whereabouts of the US military forces. The Pentagon sees these satellites as a threat for national security. At the time, U.S. had ability to show up a couple of hundred miles off somebody's shore and surprise them completely, but with overhead photography, the Soviets could keep where the U.S. aircraft carriers are, so America couldn't surprise anybody to the same extent. The United States decided to show upper hand, America already had a variety of anti-satellite missiles, among them was the ASM-135A, it was unique in a way that it wasn't launched like a rocket from the ground, but rather it could be fired from an aircraft while in flight. On August 20, 1985, President Reagan authorized a test against a satellite. The target was Solwind P-78-1, an out-of-date orbiting solar observatory. The aircraft chosen to destroy it, the F-15A. The F-15 was the perfect choice for this mission because it was big enough and powerful enough that it could carry 2,700-pound large missile on the center line, also had good navigation capabilities and was reliable. This mission might sound like a science fiction to you, but it was a real mission with very high stakes. The P-78-1 was moving 17,500 miles per hour in the orbit, in order to shoot the satellite down, you have to be very very precise, your calculations must be extremely accurate, you have to get the airplane into the equivalent of that launch point, which is quite different, because you are moving at a very high velocity. You need to be on a very precise heading at a very precise altitude at a very precise place at a very stable roll, azimuth, and acceleration. You can't go X numbers of feet left or right, and you'll miss the target for sure, so yes, it was something called perfect. The man chosen for this highly precise mission was Major General Wilbur D. Pearson. On September 13, 1985, at about 12.40 in the afternoon, Pearson strapped into his F-15 at Edwards Air Force Base, California, on a mission which would see him become history's first space ace. This is an actual photo of a F-15 on the runway, you can see the missile mounted on the jet center line. At 12.58 Pearson takes off. His target, the sole wind was 345,000 feet above the ground and was moving 23,000 feet per second. Once Pearson's F-15 reaches 30,000 feet, he'll have only 10 seconds to do all his calculations and fire the missile. At 36,000 feet, Pearson was flying supersonic at about Mach 1.2 in a steep vertical climb, and then, at 38,000 feet over the Pacific Ocean, Pearson launched the missile. Missile blew through two rocket stages as it left the atmosphere. It then released a miniature homing vehicle that locked onto the satellite's infrared image and rammed it at 15,000 miles per hour and blew the soul wind into pieces. This test was a direct success and sent an important message to the Soviet Union that you're not allowed to use the satellites to spy over the America or American armed forces. The Air Force planned to purchase 112 SM-135s and modify 48 F-15s to launch them, basing them in Washington and Virginia. The program, though promising, was considered inflammatory and many believed would end up militarizing space. The program was killed in 1988 due to a combination of congressional restrictions on its testing, budget restrictions, and concerns over potentially igniting a space arms race with the Soviets.